What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today we are checking out Car Mechanic Simulator 2018, which is actually releasing pretty soon. They sent over a preview beta version so that I could check out the game. And I always wanted to play 2015, I just never had time to sit down and like learn the game. I also don't know anything about cars, and so that becomes somewhat complicated in a game that's almost completely and totally about fixing vehicles. Uh, today we're checking the game out and I'm gonna hopefully help you get started with it. I do know how to play the game and I have figured out some stuff about it over the last five or six hours of playing. And so hopefully if you decide to get this game, I'll at least give you a nice running start or at least a nice quick jump off the runway so that you can play the game by yourself. So welcome to our garage. Uh, this is where we start out. You don't start out with any cars or anything else like that. You just start out in a very simple, very humble little garage. And in fact, there's garages like this around where I live all over the place where it's just like one tiny little bay and that's pretty much it. In fact, much smaller than this one is the one over by my house. But anyways, uh, yeah, let's get started. If you wanted to start fixing some cars, if that's what's most important to you, uh, this is how you do it. So we've got two cars in here right now. Uh, it looks like we've got a Katagiri Katsumoto and then we've got an Emden Lots. Pretty sure Emden is supposed to be like the Audi copy for this game, and then Katagiri is probably like Honda or something like that. It does kind of have that older, I don't know, Honda Accord look to it. I don't know. Uh, let's go with the Emden Lots. Uh, this one's having poor brake performance, and this one is having brake problems in general. Uh, minimal parts condition, 49%. That should be super easy to solve. By clicking right there, the car will be added to our garage, and then we've got the opportunity to start. Oh my god, the paint job ain't matching. This car is a mess. This thing looks like it was blown chunks on by that booger monster from the Mucinex commercial. Looks like he sneezed all over it. Good lord. Alright, well, if you want to move this thing over to your repair area, you're going to right click on the car, and then you go to move car, and then you get to car lifter A. That's going to take it over to the lifter, and since we're going to be working on the tires, as far as I know, uh, that's probably going to need to be done since we don't have a pit around here. Had we a pit, this would be the literal pits that we were working in, but nope, we don't actually have like a repair pit, so I think we're solid. I have seen car repair done on top of stones that we've stacked, not even shitting you. Happened during a geology trip. It was terrifying. Uh, so if you want to figure out what you want to fix with the car, you're going to go ahead and right-click on it, and then to the top right there's going to be car status. Uh, you take a look at it, and it looks like we need to replace both of the ventilated discs to the front brake discs. Okay, so that's going to be both the front tires are going to need a repair right there. And then two brake calipers need to be fixed. Now, you don't want to over-order and over-buy. Like, legitimately, these are the four things you need to fix. If you, like, repair all of their brakes and everything, that means you're going to spend a whole bunch of money on stuff you didn't need to spend it on. It's going to cost you more money than it's worth. Uh, so let's get started on this thing. Uh, ventilated brake discs are almost always in the front. So let me see here. Take this tire off right here. Uh, and then we'll get it going. Five bolt pattern. Get those things off there real quick. Handful of bolts. There we go. And the tire is off along with the wheel. Uh, we've got the disc is right here. But in order to get the disc free, we've got to take off the caliper first. And underneath the caliper, we'll have the brake pad. And so I think... Eh, brake pad's off. Okay. Uh, the, yeah, that thing is wrecked. Good lord. Let's get the one off the other side, too. Every time you remove an object, you get a synopsis, or like a synopsis of how, like, beat up it is. So if you pay attention to the top left corner, I'll show you what I mean. Uh, as I take this off, watch, it'll give you the quality level of the tire and also of the rim slash wheel. Uh, so there it goes right there. Oh, it didn't do it. Interesting. Okay, must not be pertinent right now, but watch with the caliper. With the caliper, it'll do it. I bet it'll do it. It better do it. There we go. So there it is right there. Those calipers and the cylinder in okay shape. Uh, the pad's in okay shape, too. That ventilated brake disc is just absolutely wrecked, though. I'm kind of wondering... Let me take a look back here. I'm kind of wondering if the messed up... Because they said that I had to replace a pad, right? A caliper. Okay, so they said I had to replace a caliper, but neither of the calipers on the front were in, like, absolutely atrocious condition. Let me take a look at the calipers in the back real fast and see if maybe that's what they want me to get rid of. Uh, back here on this side, yeah, that caliper is toasted. Good lord. Okay, so the caliper in the back is at 1%. Dear sweet lord. Okay, that thing is about to fall off and brain somebody on the freeway. As far as this one goes, I'm going to take a look real fast. I don't think I'll need to order too much more in order to get this thing back up and running. We also want to be careful about the uh, the caliper dit. Yeah, this caliper shot too. So there it is. Those are our two calipers, and then our two discs are for the front. 
And from there, I'm pretty sure that's all this car needs, right? Yeah, this car should be a nice quick repair. Now, when you want to buy parts, you're going to go over to the computer right here on the desk. And the computer is going to go to Up Parts. On Up Parts, uh, we want to go to Brake Systems. And we are going to need two calipers. So we'll buy those. There's our two calipers. And then we're going to need two ventilated brake discs. And there those are. And then we should be able to just slap these BZs back up on here and be solid. Uh, when you want to put things back on the car, you click on the system you want. So in this case, suspension. You right click and you go to mount parts in the bottom left. And then you're going to select the fixed parts. You can see how much more shiny that one is right there. It's definitely nowhere near as annihilated as the last one we put on there. Uh, we're going to put on the old calipers in the front. And so you click the caliper, then you click the bolt that you want to use. It'll ask you if you're sure, which kind of makes you feel like you're doing something wrong the first time you do it. And so I had to double check it the first time I did it and be like, why is it asking me if I'm sure I want to do this? It's like somebody, like if you were taking a test in school and they were like, are you sure you want to mark B? You're like, um, but I thought B was correct. Are you sure? You know, it's the same thing. Suspension system in the back. This is the one that just needed to get a new caliper. And so that repair is actually fairly simple. I will throw the new caliper on there with the old bolt because the old bolt is in reasonably decent shape. This disc will need to be repaired soon, but not my problem. Hopefully they're a repeat customer and they come back so I can charge them for it. That would be super awesome. I love getting paid for doing stuff that I already know how to do and I'm already aware of. I mean, technically, I'd give these people a call and be like, are you sure you don't want me just to do the entire brake system except for... Except for the pads, because the pads look fine, but the calipers and everything else didn't look that great. So, I mean, I'd probably give them a call and be like, are you sure? Like, this brake disc right here probably needs to go, but I guess it's their funeral. Whatever. I've warned them about it. Might shoot a little, shoot a little texty message over and be like, yo, want me to repair that for you real quick? How much do you enjoy stopping in your car? Is it a value that's above, like, 6 out of 10? Then you should probably replace this. Uh, we'll get this last one slapped back on. And, yeah, this one, need, no, I don't need to take the knuckle cover off. I need to put the ventilated disc in here. And that's one of the brand new shiny ones. Shiny! And then we'll throw that pad in there. We will throw this last caliper back on. Uh, that is... Did I put a shitty caliper back on one of these? Oh, no. I mean, technically, it's fixed enough. I don't know. Oh, well. I'm going to keep the caliper for later, then. I don't know. I'm somebody who's probably watching who's going to tell me exactly which one that I put it on there. But I know I've got one extra 100% caliper that I should not have. That's not a good sign. That's not a good thing. So I guess we'll slap this caliper back on here and hope for the best. Oh, God. This is why nobody brings their cars to my auto shop right here. I'm like, hmm. Got a caliper left over. Is that good or is that bad? What's up with all these extra bolts? Hmm. When you're done with the vehicle, you're going to go to car status. And then you just click on this thing right here. And that'll get you a nice little payday. Made about $200 off that one from where we were. In addition, another nice thing about this is you get to sell all the leftover parts. Now, some of the parts are going to be busted as a joke. Like... Some of them are going to be in rough shape. I'm going to keep that caliper right there just in case. But these brake discs can both go for like another 48 bucks. So there it is. Let's check our contracts and see what we have available. Uh, we've got brake problems on a Katagiri Katsumoto. We've got a Mayan M3, which is like an Audi, uh, which has poor brake performance. Let's go ahead and, I mean, they're both basically the same job that we just did. We'll take that order right there. And so, yeah, this is a pretty clean car, except for the fact that it looks like it's been attacked by a rust monster. All right, let's go ahead and move this on over. I'll be like, dude, take care of your car. Looks like it was attacked by an army of keys. Like, look at that shit. It looks like a great white shark chewed on this thing and then just vomited up on a beach somewhere. Like, damn. Surprised it still runs. Let's lift this thing. <laughs> Get it. That's a lot of rust on that chassis. This thing needs an angle grinder taken to it or something. Clean this thing on up. All right, so what was their list of problems? Well, their list of problems was it needs a new caliper, a new ABS pump, and then it also needs a repair with minimal parts condition, 54%. Okay, a brake disc. So I'm just going to buy the caliper and the disc and... Well, let me take the wheels off first. I might as well be thorough about this. So let's take the wheels off real fast because... You know... 
got to make sure that I'm replacing the right thing. They only want me to replace, like, one thing. And so if I can find a busted-ass caliper on this, then that's the caliper we're replacing right there. Uh, we'll get rid of this caliper because this caliper is toasted, 18%. And then the other thing that they wanted me to take care of was the ABS pump and a ventilated brake disc. Well, I can do this by just taking off one tire, I think. Uh, let's take off the disc, I guess. We'll get rid of the pad, and then we'll get rid of the disc. And so that disc isn't in that bad of shape, though. That's 71%. That thing's okay. The other busted up one must be on this side, then. Because on this car, the ventilated ones are always in the front or whatever. And so I don't know if that's cars in general. One of the car guys will have to tell me about that. I don't know if that's cars in general. But yeah, that one's a little bit worse off. Let's go ahead and get this one unseated, and I'll probably replace this one right here. Uh, this one definitely looks a tad more manky than the last one. Uh, let's go ahead and... Yeah, it's 21%. All right, and then the ABS module. ABS modules are always mounted in the back, like back here, so the back area of the engine bay. In fact, it's this little guy right here. Uh, There's the ABS pump and the ABS module. We need the module off of here. And it should actually just be quick. Normally, it's just a couple of screws to get this guy off. And so it should be pretty rapid. There we go. And so that's off. The ABS module is not actually in that bad of shape. I'm sort of surprised it needs to be replaced. It's a 74%. That's a decent ABS module. Like, legitimately, I don't know why we're replacing that. Either way, we'll go... If they want it replaced, I'll replace it. It's on the list, so... ABS modules are expensive. I wouldn't replace one unless it was completely shot, but whatever. Uh, we needed a new caliper, and we needed a new ventilated disc. And so there it is. Uh, we'll slap these on very quickly. This guy right here, right click, go to part mount. Uh, this disc right here, we're going to throw the 71% on there. Okay. Uh, brake pads, we're fine. That wasn't on our list of things to repair. Uh, the brake caliper, we will throw that caliper on there. Oh, man, I had a leftover caliper. Shit. Damn it. I got to keep track of my supplies a little bit better. I'm, like, bleeding myself for money right now. I could have just fixed it on the spot and not wasted the time. All right. We'll throw the wheel back on. There we go. I'm kind of hoping we'll get something interesting in this episode, like an engine disassembly or something. I want to show you guys, like, the nuts and bolts, not trying to be punny, of the game. Like, the things that are in there that you can actively do. Uh, with the eight, Was it the pump that they want to replace, or was it the module? Oh, it was the pump. Shit on me. I've got an extra module now. It was the pump. Damn it. All right. That is problematic. Uh, there's no buyback menu either, so uh, once you bought it... You done bought- Oh, no, I can sell it back. Good, because that would have been a huge waste of money. Uh, it was the pump that we needed. I'll just give him his all. I was going to say, it looked like that module was fine to me. Uh, the ABS pump. Ooh, that one's 950 Good lord. Better hope you don't have to do that repair. Damn, dude, you go to the auto shop and you'd be upset about that one. I'd be upset about that one. I'm like, damn. Why is it always the expensive shit that breaks on my car, man? Why is it always the expensive shit? We'll put the ABS pump right there. That one's looking shiny, too. Got all nice and chromed out. We'll screw this guy back in. There we go. I find this game to be relaxing. I don't really know. I wasn't sure how it would like perform on the channel or how anybody would like it. But I was like, you know, I'm enjoying the game enough at this point that I'm just going to record something of it and put it up. And if people like it, we can do further tutorials about how to fix like various things. You know what I mean? Uh, this thing needed a new pad. I'm sorry, disc. There we go. So that's a new disc uh, with the brake pad over here. That should be easy enough. I got a caliper laying around. We'll slap that one back on there because they don't need like a brand new caliper. I think the one that was over here was already pretty rusty and fine. And then we got to go back out and we'll slap a tire on this thing. There we go. Depending on where you're at, that'll either be a T-Y-R or a T-I-R-E. Thank you, Webster, and your rebellious attitude. Now we all have to spell everything different from each other, even though we speak the same language. Super fun 200 years later, man. We appreciate that. Uh, that's... Is everything fixed? Everything looks fixed to me. Let's get this thing the hell on out of here. All right. Uh, total payout's gonna be... Yeah, made about 550 off that one. Not too bad. Uh, there is something missing from the car. What's missing from the car? Is the module not on? Oh, the ABS module. I thought I put the ABS module on. Did it not screw on all the way? Huh. That was pretty much like the main part of our job that we had to do right there. That cryptic message right there pops up whenever you've done something stupid. I'm just letting you know, it might as well say, you're a dumbass. 
Like, uh, legitimately, it should probably just stop up and say, but like, fix the car, dumbass, and it's basically the same message. There we go. I don't know what happened right there, but we're starting to earn a little bit of cash. Hopefully we got something other than a brake repair in here. For brake reformance and Katagiri Katsumoto. Okay, well maybe we gotta level up. Let me do one more job and then we'll come back once we got something a little bit more interesting. Okay, and so we did. We actually got something a little bit more interesting now that I've leveled up. All it wanted me to do is it wanted me to hit level 2 so that it could give me a storyline quest. Uh, so this guy says, I read in a newspaper that the timing should be replaced more frequently than recommended by the manufacturer, the oil too. Please check them out and change whatever is needed. I'm going to assume that he means the timing belt uh, because that does look like a pretty fancy car. It's like some kind of Bentley or something like that. That's a pretty gorgeous vehicle right there, a royal crown. Yeah, that'll do it. And so my guess is that this guy's got a timing belt in him uh, to help sync up the engine and the head and all that stuff. And so anyways, yes, this is a gorgeous vehicle. Good lord. I don't like the color at all. It's got some kind of weird baby blue thing going on. I would probably get this one either in black ooh, or like a two-tone, like watermelon green. Yeah, two-tone green would do it for me. I think that'd be the stuff, and if I couldn't have that, just the two-tone black. Uh, let's put this thing on the ramps. Let's move this thing on over, because we're actually going to be disassembling a chunk of the engine here today, which I think you guys will enjoy. Let's go ahead and pop open the hood, and let's get a list of things we're supposed to be doing first. Uh, part not discovered, actually. We've actually got to go through and find the stuff that's busted. So this is going to be one of the fun exploratory missions. In addition, he needs an oil change, but we'll do that after everything else is done. So because everything has to do with the timing belt... Uh, the timing belt on this engine should be over on this side somewhere, because uh, it looks like they've got the exhaust manifold on the front. And so, yeah, looks like the exhaust manifold's on the front. Sometimes you can have an exhaust manifold on either side, and then, like, the timing stuff will be in the front. But, yeah, it looks like it's going to be on this side right here is, I think, what we're looking at. So we've got a belt tensioner right there. Now, for big disassemblies, there's a couple of rules that you're going to want to know. Uh, those ignition coils are shot, so I'm going to guess that those are the first things that we need to fix because those ignition coils are in real bad shape. Let's take off the head cover real fast. It should just be a couple of bolts to get that one out of there. And once the head cover's off, uh, let's take a look at the spark plugs. All they, they look okay to me. Uh, the camshafts are going to have to go. My guess is those cam gears are bad right there. The timing belt looks okay. Um, the cover looks okay. So there's got to be something underneath here, probably the cams. And then there's also going to be like a, like there's another one. There's a big gear down here. I forget what it's called. But that one's probably shot, too. I'll bet you anything. So in order to finish deconstructing the top of the engine head, essentially, we got to take the spark plugs out. We're going to have to disassemble this side right here, too. And that's going to start with the belt tensioner. So we'll take that off. Once the belt tensioner is gone, we're going to grab the serpentine belt right there. Oh, is that one on top? That one's on top. We'll get that one first. Then we'll get that one right there. Uh, then we will get the roller done. Then we need the water pump. And then we need whatever that one to the bottom left is. I don't know what the one to the bottom left is. Uh, the crankshaft pulley. So that's going to have to go too. I've always enjoyed taking things apart. It's putting back together that I always suck at. I don't think we'll need to remove the alternator for right now. Pretty sure there's no reason for us to drop that off the vehicle. But we're going to give this a go on this side because it looks good to me. Alright, so inside of here we've got the timing belt. Timing belt's quality is 90%, so that's fantastic. We don't have to worry about that. Crankshaft looks good, so we don't have to do a full engine disassembly. I don't even think we can fix the crankshaft as far as I know because the crankshaft is going to be inside the engine block, and I would have to do like a full massive engine disassembly if I wanted to fix that. So cam gears, cam gears, and then the camshafts over here, and then we will jump off of this thing and see if that's all of the objects that needed to be fixed. It is, actually. So we need to get, uh, what is the engine pattern on this thing? It's like an I-4 or something like that. Yeah, it's an I-4 pattern. So we need an I-4. You always want to pay attention to that stuff. So there is, like, a list you can take as you go through. You can right-click on objects, and you can say, like, add to list. And so let's say that I wanted to get, oh, I don't know, a new ABS module or whatever. So we click on the ABS module, and you can say, like, add to list here, like parts notes or something like that. Yeah. And so before you fix something, you can make a list of things that you need to buy on your shopping list. I don't know if it automatically will purchase the right ones for the right engine. I've been doing it manually just to teach myself how to do it properly without screwing up and paying attention to detail. But that's that. We got that all nice and banged out, and so we need to go order. Let me take a look at some of the stuff that I need here. So that's a camshaft. 
Do I just need like a generic camshaft? I don't even know, man, because those are just labeled camshaft. Normally it tells you like when you rip off a tire, it'll be like, you know, 6, 255, 55 or whatever. Uh, let me take a look at the ignition head here and see if these will mount. They will not, so it's just like a normal camshaft, I guess. Weird. All right, that's fine. That's cool. Saves me money. You can sell these back for the same price you bought them for, so it's no biggie. They got that Amazon return policy. Oh, there's a radio. There we go. We need some music up in here. That's what we need. We need some boogie jams. All right, so we need a camshaft. Uh, there it is right there, so we'll get two of those. Uh, we also needed ignition coils. I think four of them, although it's probably not pluralized. There we go. Uh, the ignition coil that we have, I think, is that one? I think. It'll still be there in a minute. Yeah, that's the one it is. I think that's what I thought that was what it looked like. All right, so we need four of those. Got the ignition coils. And then I think it was two cam gears. And so I think it's just this guy right here. So there we go. We got our two cam gears. Let's reassemble this engine and get this thing on the way because this guy's got money to spend. What a beautiful car. Shit, even the interior looks gorgeous. Although, honestly, what I would do with this vehicle is I would get one of the big plastic covers that goes over the top of this right here so it looks a little bit cleaner so that you can still see the air intake and you can still see, like, the top of the engine assembly. But at the same time, yeah, buddy. Get one of those ones like the Chrysler 300C has. That'd be pretty sick. I'd be down with it. Uh, let's get up in here and let's do some repairs, shall we? So camshaft numero uno. Let's go ahead and drop you one in there. Camshaft numero dos. Uh, we also need to have the spark plugs put back in before this is going to go any better. So let's spark, spark, spark it on up. Normally I avoid sparking it uh, when I'm working on heavy machinery. But for today, I'm going to make a massive exception. Cam gears go on right there. There we go. Uh, cam gears is done. We need the timing belt now that we will throw on there. Now that the timing belt is back on, we need the timing belt cover. And so that should be easy enough. Dude, this music got me going right now. Got me excited about fixing some shit. All right. Hopefully I didn't mess anything up here. Uh, crankshaft pulley needs to go back on. So we'll throw that on there. Just one big bolt to get that guy going. Little bolt to get the idle roller and then the uh, water pump back on. There we go. Cool. Now that that's done, uh, we throw that belt back on, and then there's a second belt that goes down here, and then I think we also have the belt tensioner that needs to go back on, and that's just one bolt right there. Should be nice and easy to get back into place, and I think we're mostly done on that side. Then what we need to do is we need to put the head cover back on. Once the head cover is back on and we've done all of our screwing and other associative things that would normally lead me into peals of laughter and jokes, but you know what, it's like 11 o'clock at night right now. I don't know if I have it in me right now. Make the appropriate joke yourself. It's fine. Nobody's going to judge you. And then we're going to throw the ignition coils onto the top real fast. Uh, can I line them all up and then hit them all at the same time? Good. I'm going to do that. So there's our ignition coil. Oh, never mind. They're already in. Uh, so that's done. I think he wanted an oil change as well so let me make sure everything's been fixed okay so that's good uh, we spent about 800 bucks job isn't done yet though it needs an oil change so let's take a look pull the dipstick real fast and he's actually got oil in there uh, but he wants an oil change so you know give the man what he wants uh, close that down real quick and then what we need is we got to put this thing up on the riser so let's take them on up. Now that it's on up, we're going to use this oil drainy thing. I've never seen one of these before. Every time I've ever done an oil change, it's just with a pan and you pull like a plug at the bottom of here. Uh, and then we'll click on this and we'll say use it. Okay, there was a little bit of oil in there. Not too bad. Uh, we'll move that back to where it came from. From whence it came. And then we will lower the car back down. Uh, for simplicity's sake, the game assumes that you have like infinite oil. And so changing the oil is as easy as unscrewing the cap on the top of the engine manifold right here. And then I like to give it like a good nine count. So one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000, five, and so on. There we go. 
That should be about right. Uh, if you can't get the, the mix quite right, all you gotta do is check the dipstick real fast. And then in addition, the game actually has like a specific amount of oil it wants you to put in, and we hit that specific amount. So this car is ready to GTFO. Let's get this thing moving. Uh, $2,200 for that job. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. So there it is. Uh, we're sitting on a little bit of cash and a little bit of XP right now. Let's see what our calls have to do for us. It looks like a couple of brake jobs, unfortunately. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mash through those. This game is called Car Mechanic 2018. If you like the game and you want to see a little bit more of it or you want to explain to me what things inside of the car do, I can tell you what they're called. I can't tell you what they do. Most of the things in there, no clue what they do. I just unscrew them and put them back. Replace them, whatever. I don't know what they do, though. I don't know what they do, though. Feel free to tell me down in the comments below. I'll see you all next time. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, this is Car Mechanic Simulator 2018. I'll see y'all later. If you like what I do on the channel, make sure you check out the Patreon that I have listed below as well. Bye, everybody.